And welcome back. That's right. Welcome back on this lovely Thursday. I nearly said Friday. On this lovely Thursday morning while everything is going A-OK. -okay. Two wonderful topics so far uh, for the morning. We want to uh, welcome you to our third segment and final segment for this morning's program. In with us, like I mentioned, we've got one of Belize's idol, and I say that because everybody is always on the bandwagon of this individual. Ladies and gentlemen, Kaya Katus is here with us, and of course, she'll be talking about the achievements in Mexico. You have been above and beyond. Look, I'll tell you this much. A bike see, when a bike see you, this bike, I, I want Kaya. I want Kaya. <laughs> Sports in a whole, you've been above and beyond. A lot of folks for, uh, uh, respect you when it comes to sporting activities in Belize. Kaya, mm -hmm. welcome and good morning. Morning and thank you guys for the invite. Well, Kaya, I think, you know, we, we, we don't get the opportunity enough to talk about uh, the highlights of Belizeans who are really being successful in their field and you're definitely mm -hmm. one of them. We know that uh, you take the initiative to travel outside of Belize to compete as much as possible. Um, and uh, you are literally on a four successive wins from four different races. That's right, um, and three of them in Mexico. Three of them in Mexico. So first of all, I want to say congratulations. Big congrats. Uh, because you represent Belize every time you step out, whether as a part of a formal association or just individually. And I just want to ask you how you're feeling at this time. I mean, have you been... <laughs> This is a winning streak. It's obviously a great boost for you in terms of where you are in your uh, physical capacity. And how does it feel for you at this particular time? Well, it definitely feels good to, like you said, be on a roll. Yeah. yeah. Um, ever since the National Road Championship was over in June, which I won, so I'm currently a National Road Champion, mm -hmm. I have been training for the Caribbean Cycling Championships, which we were okay. to go to ending uh, last month. Um, so training for that race, I was, you know, racing in Mexico, training in the Hummingbird, just getting prepared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that's basically what, what, what got me to this point. So how do you find these races, first of all? How yeah. do you decide which one you can com can and will compete in? Well, I have some friends in Mexico mm -hmm. and they send me invitations almost every week. Okay. So it's just to choose, you know, which one is affordable for me to go yeah. to. Okay. So let's talk about the first one, which was in August, right? Yeah. That was a tour. In August, it was uh, La Vuelta Yucatan. That mm -hmm. was in Merida. It was a two days, two stage tour. The first day being an individual time trial and the second day a criterium on Pasejo de Montejo. Okay. Um, I won both stages. I won the time trial by one second. Um, I was doubting myself a whole lot because I'm not that, uh, you know, I'm not a very good time trialist, but going out there and, and you know, seeing all these girls and these pretty machines, mm -hmm. I said to myself, you know, maybe if I finish at least 20 seconds behind first place, I'll be able to make it up tomorrow yeah. in the criterium. So yeah. I went out there as hard as I could and I ended up winning by one second. Kaya, what, what, what's your mindset going into a race? Because like you mentioned, you had doubts. You, you, you're not a good time trialist. Well, at least that was what you thought. You went out <laughs> there at one second and one second is big. Yeah. That's huge. What's your mindset going into an international race? Well, um, I always, always remain focused, especially at the start line. And, you know, think about the course. Think about what I'm going out there to do, what I'm there to do. And um, what I never doubt is my training. Mm -hmm. My father always tells me, train hard so that you can race easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I never doubt my training. Um, what I do doubt at times is my time trialing abilities because nice. that's not something that in Belize we train for often. Mm -hmm. What's However, the difference? Um, it's, it's an individual, it's a race against time mm -hmm. okay. instead of against people. So you go individually, uh, maybe a minute or two apart. And the person with the best time oh, wins okay. overall. Okay. So it, it's not like you have someone beside you to you know, know if you're going too slow ah, or too fast. It's just you, you against the clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have another person to gauge yeah. to see if they're right behind you or right ahead of you. Exactly. Let, let's, Interesting. Let's, let's be upfront about this. What's the difference between racing abroad and racing at home? Definitely the numbers, mm -hmm. the competition. Racing in Belize, there are probably about six of us. Hmm. Going out there for La Volta Yucatan, there was 30 of us, and they were teams. The smallest was a, a three-person team, and, well, I was out there alone. Really? And, and wow. from, from that race, actually, the, the team that I'm going to ride with this weekend saw me in that race, and they actually invited me to ride with them this weekend, so hmm. that's... 
that's how that came about. You know, I'm a foreigner out there riding alone, and, and yeah. I still won. So, yeah. so, I so you were there. you were a good get for them. Yeah. <laughs> what everybody would pick up on a good get. <laughs> so you you were able to take the the t uh, championship in August. Then in October, in September, there was a race in Belize. Yeah, that yeah. was the uh, Leslie's Import September Criterium uh -huh. on Albert and Regent Street. Yeah, I, I won that as well. It came down to a sprint finish, and as you guys know, that's my specialty. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you're excited when you see the end of the race is near and somebody is, is gaining well, up on you? What, 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 I, what I like in a race is... Um, lately, I've, I've been doing different things. People yeah. always expect me, competitors, to, to come bring it down to a sprint. Yeah. For the National World Championship, I actually finished solo. Mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to take the chance and... Yeah go out if they, if, they, if they get me they get me if they don't i win yeah so that that's what i did and I'm, i've been trying new things and and 2017 the kind of training i've been putting in and, and the shape that i've gotten my body the conditioning mm -hmm. um will definitely be seeing new things Kaya, what is your biggest what 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 do you want to be your biggest achievement where do you see yourself in the next let's say three years um believe it or not i um trying to get out to Cuba to do some training over there to prepare and see how, how much it will be possible for Tokyo 2020. Wow. Mm. You don't actually, I actually see her in Tokyo already. You said Tokyo 2020. <laughs> because you seem to be the type of person that never gives up. And that's one of the things that puts you into idolship, whereby people see you as a go-getter. What, where, what I noticed, one of the things we got to say kudos to you about is that you seem to, uh, uh, we have heard of uh, you now taking out uh, young cyclists, yeah. actually young people, and then turning them into cyclists. How is that going for you? Um, I started with just a, a summer series, something mm -hmm. like a summer camp for mm -hmm. kids from ages 3 to 18 years. And um, last year, I actually started a high school series. Nice. So for high school, it's like competing against schools, but instead of football, basketball, it's actually cycling. 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 And it's just to introduce the sport to them from a young age so that they know what it's like instead of just saying, mom and dad, you know, I want a bike and have no idea what cycling is about. Because, yeah. you know, people look at cycling and they say, you know, I like to ride, but cycling is a very difficult sport. It's mm -hmm. painful. It's brutal. It's everything you can think about that's hard. <laughs> Any success stories so far out of the, the summer and uh, the high school situation? Um, well, from the high school races, there, there's this uh, group of young ladies from Wesley College that uh, Alicia Thompson actually took them on. Okay. So they're riding with her and, and they have, they're looking very good. Yeah. Um, one of them actually rode the race with us in Chetamal this past Sunday. Mm -hmm. And um, the other three are also looking good. So I'm expecting for them to, well, they're, they're on Alicia's team, so okay. I'll be having competition <laughs> come January. <laughs> but I'm sure they'll but be having a lot of respect for you. You welcome that, mm -hmm. I would imagine, especially I, after being, I, I can't imagine being such a small group of competitive women. Mm -hmm. uh, you're all passionate about the sport. Uh, you're all passionate about having more women involved. So when you see up and coming competition, does it excite you? I, I try my best to help, you know, anybody who wants to get into cycling, females especially, I try, you know, to give them advice. I'm, you know, I'm always out there to, to help because, like you said, populating the field is, you know, yeah. that's my main objective. Yeah. Have you, have you, have you tapped into Central America besides uh, Mexico? Uh, have you um, tapped into Central America? Not, not for cycling yet. Mm -hmm. For football, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we know that. We know that. <laughs> so let's go back. So we, we, we had the September win, and then you had two more races in Mexico. One was just last weekend, right? Yeah, the okay. one before that was uh, La Vuelta Mayacoba. That okay. was in Playa del Carmen um, around the, the second weekend in October. Mm -hmm. um, that was a two-day tour as well. Okay. However, it's something that we're not used to in Belize. It's the, the, the speed um, for the first... The first uh, couple of miles, it's controlled. So you have a car in front of you, okay. and you can't go more than 25 miles per hour. Yeah. Everybody rides together. Um, the first day was 100 miles. So after 85 miles, when they opened the race, the car drived off, the flag came down, and for 15 miles, it was head-on racing. 
Really? So, and that is to just encourage people who aren't yet competitive okay. uh -huh. in their first competition, you know, so that they can ride in a group, be with, you know, people instead of getting left behind from the get-go. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's more of, you know, to, to encourage people. And in Mexico, they do a lot of that. They try to introduce new people into the sport all the time and, and you know, give them a chance to get to like it before they start suffering. Yeah. <laughs> before they choose to engage in this painful yeah. training. So then from day one, you were able to take that... Uh... Actually, the first day I was second. Okay. A young lady from Cancun. Uh, the males and female, we went together and they just did separate prizes. So okay. um, in the sprint, she jumped out and by the time I was able to get around, she got me by like half a wheel to the line. So mm. it was a, a very tight one, but... You know, and then she's, the second a, day she's a very fast, fast young lady. So I didn't expect that. I had no idea who she was. I wasn't even watching her. Uh -huh. yeah. I was watching other Mexicans that I met, you know, from previous races. Uh -huh. okay. And the second day, I was more prepared. Yeah, <laughs> You came back with a vengeance, yeah. first of all. <laughs> and, and I won and I was able to win the bike. Oh. Wow. So what kind of bike really, did you win? Um, it's a 2017 Specialized Ruby. Wow. Okay. It's a, a so that's your new nice baby. Bike. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> cost more than my car. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so so you've been you've been to these races. Uh, you've been we, we got we got them. the third finish there. We yeah. got we got to yeah. talk about that one. That one, one this week, this weekend, right? Yeah. Where was that? This was in um, Chetamal. Okay, so okay. this is the finish here. You came in as you said earlier. You're not yeah. looking for a sprint all the time. You this came was in a solo. solo win, yeah. Okay. Eleven of us lined up, and um, on the first lap, I decided I'm going to test the field, see who's following me. You know, see who's who my competition is, because mm -hmm. I had no idea who these ladies were, with the exception of um, Alicia and, and one of her teammates from Belize. Okay. So I attacked, and I looked back, and I saw everyone coming. I said, okay. It's 10 against 1. <laughs> 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 and I eased up and, and there was a counter attack from a young lady from Chetamal and everybody looked at her. I said, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So I allowed her to reach to a distance where I knew that, that I could go across fast enough without anyone coming with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just what I did. And when I got there, we started rotating and we held out the field for the next nine laps. And on the last lap, I attacked her and I went alone and finished solo. What, 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 is, what are these people telling you? Are you, are you like the, the, cycling, the cycling monster to these people when you get to, when you get to Mexico? I the, don't the girl to watch, the lady to watch out there is Kaya Katus. I could hear them actually saying it on the radio and the TV. And Kaya Katus says, I could, actually, I could actually hear it. Are you the girl out there? When I, when I, when I go to Mexico, I'm known. And um, I think a lot of it comes from, from my dad. I used to go with him to Mexico when I was very small, before I probably even knew how to ride a bike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they know the Katus family very well. And now to see my brothers and myself mm -hmm. racing, and not only racing, but winning and doing the same thing that my yes. dad used to do, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people really, they really know who we are. And, and especially in Merida, we have a lot of guys who come to race in Belize a mm -hmm. lot. So, you know. Yeah. What's, what's the biggest race in Mexico you'd like to do? Um, there was a there was a tour in Mexico. I think it was back in March. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's in um, Baja California, Mexico. Mm -hmm. That's just um, mm -hmm. at the border with with, with California, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's a, a four day five stage female only tour. Okay. Oh. And it, it happens every year, but to go there you have to be on a team, a registered mm. team, and. Um, Actually, next year, I am trying to get an invitation okay. with the okay. team, and it's, it's looking bright so far. So. Okay. so you might be able to achieve that. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're playing on your, you're, you're riding with your first Mexican team. This weekend. This weekend. Nice. Yeah. What's, what's that like for you? Um, it's uh, ease on my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, you know, having them pay your transportation, accommodation, yeah. you know, yeah. food and all that stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a ease on the pockets. But... To be out there and, and be racing with a team, I don't really know them, mm -hmm. you know, that good, okay. how they That's ride right. and things like that. But um, I guess this will be the first of many. Okay. And, you know, getting to know these ladies and, and how they ride. 
You know what's interesting is that uh, we usually hear the opposite side of the story with uh, somebody bringing in a, a top foreigner to yeah. be a part of their team for yeah. cross it's country. A flip of the coin. And now you are <laughs> being that person, uh, especially in this particular race coming up. Uh, is it? Do you feel motivated to be able to? Uh, I don't know. If you are going in solo, you kind of have that pride of doing that, knowing that you did it on your own. Yeah. Um, coming with a team, you have the financial uh, alleviation, uh, that issue there. But what is it like for you? Do you think you have a preference of going it alone if perhaps you had a sponsor mm -hmm. or you would like to have the team experience? Riding with a team is definitely better. Cycling, although you're pedaling your own bike, it's very yeah. much a team sport. Yeah. And. Um, this race this weekend will be uh, much bigger than the one I rode back in August in terms of numbers. Okay. So there will be more than 30 female cyclists. And um, having a team is, is better for me to play on because if someone who is wearing the same jersey like me goes down the road, you know, I'm not forced to have to chase or to mm. have to move yeah. with everything that moves. I have other people that can do that. Okay. So um, I would be the go-to girl, but, you know, there are... Plan, plan A, Plan B, Plan C, different scenarios that, yes. that can, can actually play out. And what a lot of people don't know with teams is that oftentimes, and this is what we have been told in previous interviews, is that sometimes it doesn't matter who crosses the finish first, as it's long as it's team a team jersey. member. Yeah, exactly, that's the team concept. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you prepared to perhaps have a team member cross before you? Is that something you have mentally adjusted yourself to? Yeah. Um, in, in Belize, I do have a team, mm -hmm. Siri, and we have um, both Chavaria sisters, you know, riding with me. And there have been instances where um, Patricia has won races, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times we're going to races with, with Chavarias or Plan A, you know, and maybe for some reason or the other it does not work out and I would have to come and clean up the pieces. Mm -hmm. But um, th it's something that, that, you know, I have been... It's, you, you think about it and you prepare your mind that, you know, this is, you're on a team, it's not, it's not a it's solo thing. It's an individual, thing. Yeah. yeah. While a lot of young ladies look up to you because of uh, your ability and the fact that you represent yourself well, your brand well, what do you say to young folks who would want to be a part of a sport, sporting activity, but they're very reluctant to because they don't know what to meet? What, what do you say to these, to, to these kids? Just do it. You always have to just go for it. If, if you are thinking about, you know, you want to play football, you want to play basketball, start in school. Find a way that you can, mm -hmm. you know, participate, become active. And who knows, maybe you're the next best thing. Yeah. Oh. And Send it well. I know, right? So uh, we have the four win streak. You head out into another race and uh, you said you have uh, aspirations to go into some training in Cuba. Um, is there anything else that you have your, your eyes on before the end of the year? Um, well, the cycling year is um, about to start in December. Mm -hmm. okay. Our season is about to start in December. And um, the first race would be uh, this, uh, what, what do they call it? Haman Turkey race. <laughs> that's just before Christmas. <laughs> so um, that's the next, the next uh, classic yeah. on the local calendar. Yeah. And after that, it's the Crumb Classic. Mm -hmm. okay. um, years. Yeah, it's been a couple of years since I've, I've won that one, or a, a CRA member has won that one, so my team is going for that. Okay. Definitely. And what do you feel about your physical shape, where you're at right now? You said you're trying new things in your style of racing. You also said your conditioning is different at this point. Yeah, my training has, um, has been tweaked a lot. My younger brother, Reese, has stepped in the shoes of my dad and, and he's now the one who does the coaching okay. so you know he prepares all my my training plans and he looks at the races checks out the terrain and that's where he decides you know where i'm going to train so i've been doing a lot of training through the hummingbird okay mm -hmm. excellent because um caribbean cycling championships was in guadeloupe and hilly terrain. yeah hilly terrain so i was doing a lot of training through the hummingbird you know parking at belmopan and yeah going south but um i've been doing a lot of speed work as mm -hmm. well racing with females i don't need to do that much mm -hmm. speed work um for some reason oscatus people have that, that fast <laughs> fast switching us but um i race with the guys twice yeah. a week thursdays okay. and saturdays and um 
I race with them. I don't ride with them. Okay. And they so, don't cut you any slack. Definitely not. <laughs> Nobody wants a girl to beat them. Well, <laughs> you, you're going to take them. You've got the ability to. Well, I, you know, it's, it's so nice to, to finally meet you in person in terms of you telling us your achievements and, and, and where you would like to see yourself. So a lot of people, I'm sure, would be jumping on that bandwagon. Is it hard to gain sponsorship for, for, for cycling, especially somebody as established as you in terms of the name? You would think it wouldn't be, but definitely it's, it's one of the hardest things. My sponsors are definitely my parents. Okay. Um, I have Smart, who comes on board from time to time, but um, definitely have to give yeah. big respect to my parents because without them, I wouldn't be, you know, half of where I am today in terms of sponsorship and cycling. Yeah. And uh, this is a great opportunity since you said it's right before the local season starts. We know over the past couple of years you've def taken on the role of an advocate uh, seeking equality in terms of uh, the types of races that women are, are, are having um, in Belize and also the prizes that are offered as well. Are you hoping that this year you will begin to see the change that you've been speaking out against uh, for the past couple of years? Yeah, I, I think uh, making the noise that I've been making this year has um, really sparked some some trouble, mm -hmm. if I may say. But um, I got a call just on Tuesday from the president of Belize City, Mr. Erson Butland. Mm -hmm. He was telling me that he's looking to some Americans want to come to for the female cross country, mm -hmm. but it's like eleven of them, and he wants to limit it. I was telling him, don't limit it. Yeah. 15 of them want to come invite bring all, them. Yeah. bring them all. Because if, if, if we keep limiting our competition, the yeah. female field in Belize is already small. Mm -hmm. If we're saying, okay, we're inviting one person from here, one person from there, maybe that one person doesn't show up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 15 of them you invite. If eight out of that 15, 15. come, it's still a lot. Yeah. Invite yeah. everybody who wants to come. Have the invitation open. If you want to cut the mail and say, okay, foreigners can come, but not on local teams, no problem. The mail... There are a lot of male cyclists in Belize. Mm -hmm. When cross country time, it's a hundred plus. Yes. This year, female cross country, we had maybe six or seven. Mm -hmm. So the numbers are significantly different. So my thing is, anybody who wants to come, them invite come. them. Let them come. Have it open. If it's a six man team against one person, then let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. You just want to race. I just want to race. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Kaya, we're so glad that we had you uh, with us this morning. Uh, we have been following the achievements you've been making and uh, definitely wanted to take the opportunity to have the rest of Belize know. Uh, we know your mom is a, is a great cheerleader for you. She lets everybody know. Yes. So, uh, that's how we were kept She's up actually to troubling you. with me this weekend. Uh, Excellent. Does she go on most of your trips? She tries to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you take a cheering squad along with you? or? Um, I don't often get the opportunity. It's too expensive. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And the race is going to be in? In Merida. In Merida. Okay. Well, best of luck. Uh, we know you'll do well, and of course, as you, as you pointed out, it is going to be as a part of a Mexican team, so uh, we hope everything goes well. Thank you, thank you. All right. All right. We're going to go ahead and take that final break now, and when we come back, we'll have our wrap-up, so stay tuned.